today, Sunny 95. Feel good. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man on the street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is the episode number 596. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all your fathers out there. And I'm going to detail some of the folks special to me in a little bit. And later on, you're going to have a chance to call in and win free flowers if you have the correct answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And you'll be given a chance to wish your own father or father-in-law a happy Father's Day. Okay? So, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. All past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. It's Dr. Kavit Cohn Associates. All right, so, like, oh, and, and to the topic of today's show is, I'm going to count down my top ten reasons that it's great to be a dentist. Okay, I get, um, I get people all the time coming to the office asking if they can shadow because they're, they want to become dentists. I actually had one reach out to me that I had on this show last August, who was wanting to be a dentist, and he just sent me an email that said he finished his master's, got a master's in biochemistry or something like that, in hopes of in increasing his chances of getting accepted into dental school. So um, uh, his name is Dylan Adkins. You might remember that show, and I wish him well, and we're going to be actually seeing him a little bit in a little bit here. Um, maybe, I don't know, next week. Okay, but like I said, I want to I wanna wish my father... Um, a happy Father's Day. Now, my father passed away in 1987, so, Dad, if you can hear me, happy Father's Day. <laughs> also, my father-in-law, uh, George Janicek, who passed away in 1994. I refer to him as Dad Y. I have Dad Y and Mom Y, which is my wife's uh, uh, parents. So, Dad Y, if you can hear me, happy Father's Day. I'd also like to wish a happy Father's Day to my son, BJ, my son-in-law, Corey, and my other son-in-law, Jim. All right? And again, if you call in and win those flowers, you'll have a chance to wish your father a happy Father's Day as well. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's uh, my top ten reasons why it's great to be a dentist, and I'm going to count them down, so um, consider these from the least, I guess, important, if you will. Um, number, uh, so number ten, we get to work inside where it's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. This may sound silly, but to me it's very powerful. It's so powerful because people will come in, you know, and, oh, it's too hot out there, and I'm like, Hey, it's 72 degrees in here. <laughs> and in the winter, people come in and they're shivering, you know, and they have their parka and their scarf and their other scarf and their boots that go up halfway up their calf. And say, ah, it's cold out there. And I go, hmm, 72 degrees in here. <laughs> now, uh, I, I just feel fortunate. A lot of people work outdoors and uh, they like it. Honestly, many people would, would hate my job because they wouldn't want to be inside. But, boy, I think I might hate theirs having to be outside. So, not that I don't work outside sometimes. I... You know, I'm out there um, shoveling snow, for example, um, putting down salt, uh, cutting the grass in the summer, all kinds of stuff like that. But working in a controlled climate is, to me, really cool. Uh, okay, number nine, we get to work in a clean office environment. Of course, uh, and under most circumstances, my hands and my clothes don't get dirty. And that's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, my wife and I are building a new house, and it's under construction, which means there's mud everywhere. And every time it rains, I mean, I have this whole other set of clothes now that I never used to have to worry about. I have these, these like, beat-up, uh, old, dirty clothes in a box. Now, I wash them, and I have two sets, but it seems like every time I go up there, I'm filthy. <laughs> Just filthy. I can't imagine being the excavators who are the ones that come in and scoop off the grass, you know, and make the mud. And uh, then they're always, like, cleaning the mud off the tracks of their track hoe and, 
and uh, the hands, you know, always dirty. Actually, when I work outside, and because I'm a dentist, I always wear exam gloves, even when I'm just at home. And I remember uh, the other day I was doing that, and I think I went to, the, it was Sonic, I think, or maybe it was Wendy's. And I had my pink exam gloves on. I'm wondering what the, uh, what the clerk might have thought of that. We bought the pink ones because October was a breast cancer awareness month, and we bought pink gloves, and we hadn't used them all. So <laughs> anyway, so number nine, then, is getting to work in a clean office environment. And under most circumstances, uh, my hands and clothes don't get dirty. Number eight is we get to use our brain and not necessarily our brawn. Because my father actually told me this. This is apropos for Father's Day. He said, make sure you get a job where you can use your brain instead of your brawn because your brawn will give out as you get older, but your brain never will. And I think a, a good example of that would be Stephen Hawking uh, up until his death. He was brilliant, and he still managed to be relevant, even though he could barely, um, he, I don't know, could he move his own wheelchair? I can't remember. I think it might have gotten worse and worse. Uh, he had MLS. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, yeah. And so uh, getting to use your, your, uh, your brain instead of your brawn, to me, is, a, is a, a privilege. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't take brute force to get teeth out sometimes when I'm extracting teeth, you know? But it takes a lot of uh, um, muscle at times to do what we do, but it's still not the same. It's still not the same. You know, and we have leverage that we can use, and uh, people that aren't uh, very strong can still extract teeth. It's just a little more finesse in their case. And of course, you don't want to manhandle the tooth. You want to make sure that you protect the, bo the bone, uh, that you don't rip tissue if you can help it, that sort of thing. So, but still, uh, primarily, people come and are paying me for my brains, because I know what to do, right? Know what's wrong if you tell me you have these symptoms. And to me, that's a, a great, great privilege. You probably thought this would be higher on the list, because a number, wait a minute, uh, no, no, I, I skipped ahead. Okay, we're, we're down to number seven, all right? Uh, number seven is an interesting one. Number seven is that we get to choose how we use our degree, and there are so many ways we can use it. So I made a list. I probably have a few more that I can add to it. But one thing, as a dentist, you can work as an associate with another dentist, you know, or two. Have a two-person or three-person, three-dentist office. You can choose to work as an employee dentist at a corporate dental office, like an Aspen or a Comfort. You can do dental research. You never have to leave the university that you graduated from. You could just stay there and, and research uh, products and research uh, bacterial growth in the mouth and what causes decay and how can we stop it? Is there such a thing that we can stop decay? Can we reverse decay? Can we regrow teeth? Can we take stem cells to grow a new tooth? Um, all the research that went into us being able to place dental implants was amazing, and it took decades to figure that out. And now we just take it for granted. And so you could do, be a researcher in that regard. Uh, you could uh, teach at a university, be somebody who teaches the dental students, the dental hygiene students. I actually was a clinical instructor at Ohio State University in the dental college for uh, 20 years, so I've done that uh, a little. Uh, you could be a prison dentist. I get. I get these letters every once in a while from the prison system in the state of Ohio asking if I'm interested in being a dentist at one of their prisons. And I think one of the advantages they, they list is that you, it's an 8 to 5, 9 to 5 job. You never have to do after hours stuff. Um, it sounds a little bit um, interesting and a little bit strange, but these people need care. And. Um, I don't know how many assistants or how many hygienists. I don't, I don't, I'm kind of picturing a one-person operation, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a dental assistant or two, and, and there's a dental hygienist. I don't know how they handle paying for that. I mean, obviously, the dentist gets paid by the prison system, but I don't know how the uh, inmates would be required to pay for their care. Maybe they don't. A dentist could be a consultant for a dental insurance company, someone who examines claims and looks at x-rays and looks at photographs of teeth and determines whether this procedure or that procedure is covered. Sounds like a thankless job to me, and I don't know that I'd actually want to work for an insurance company in that way. But anyway, you could own your own private practice like I do. Uh, you could be a dentist in the military. And I know several dentists who have made their life as a military dentist. They just stayed. Also, you could be a public health dentist, where they send you into remote areas like Point Barrow, Alaska or something, the northernmost point in the United States, 
And in fact, if you look at the map, you'll see that not only is it the northern coast of Alaska, but there's a peninsula that juts out north into the Arctic uh, uh, Circle even more, and that's where Point Barrow is. I, one, of my, uh, one of my classmates from dental school actually went there right after dental school. So anyway, so if, you might, if, you're, if you're counting, and hopefully you are, uh, we're doing the top 10 counting backwards uh, reasons that I think it's great to be a dentist. And we started with number 10, which is we get to work inside where it's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Number nine, we get to work in a clean office environment, and under most circumstances, our hands and our clothes don't get dirty. Number eight was we use our brain, not necessarily our brawn. And um, number seven is we can choose to use our degree in many, many ways. And I just repeated that because, as you know, we always do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day each day, each week, I mean. And so if you remember uh, three of those four, you're going to win. <laughs> now, <laughs> you do have to call, though. And so I'm going to give you the number now. Don't call yet because I'm giving you the question, but it's 614-459-9769, 614-459-9769. And so before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, and remember, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. You'll also have a chance to uh, wish your father a happy Father's Day on the air. The question is, where did I put it? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, today I'm bringing you my top ten reasons it's great to be a dentist. What are some of the reasons I've mentioned so far? A, I get to work indoors. B, I get to work in a clean office setting. C, I get to use my brain, not necessarily my brawn, or D, all of the above. All right, the winner is going to receive those free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko! Let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavitko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavitko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Denise on the line with us. Good morning, Denise. How are you? I'm great. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Do you have the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? Well, 
you kind of have to use your brawn a little bit to yank on a tooth or something, but <laughs> I'd still go with all the above. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, what is your father's name? Would you like to wish him a happy Father's Day? I don't have my dad anymore, but I would still like to wish him a happy Father's Day because um, I know he's looking down. Yeah, I, I wished my own father and father-in-law the same earlier because they're not with us anymore either. So, yeah, hopefully he heard you, right? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Miss you. Love you. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So stay on the line, Denise. We want to get the information where we can send you those flowers, okay? Thank you. And thank you for listening and for tuning in. All right. For those of you that didn't win this week, uh, feel free to call in next week because we're here every Sunday. Next week's episode will be 597. Okay, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. And we're counting down my top 10 reasons why it's great to be a dentist, at least in my opinion. And so we covered the first four, I mean 10, 9, 8, and 7. The sixth is the one I started to allude to that I think people might have thought would have been lower on the list, meaning the top on the list, but, um, but it's not. Uh, but it's this, dentists tend to make a comfortable living. And it is true. Now, dentists don't get rich. I don't think physicians do either. Uh, if you want to be rich, you have to open up your own business or be, a, be some kind of a CEO or, or somebody, you know, high up in business. Those folks uh, seem to do super great for themselves, and oftentimes it's with a four-year degree. They don't even have to have the advanced training, which means they don't have as much in the way of school loans to pay back, and so they can get on with uh, enjoying their life a lot sooner than you, you can if you've gone to uh, some type of a medical school training or dental school training that's taken you eight years at, at least, and in some cases even more if somebody had to go on and get a master's like Dylan Atkins did, or sometimes even be working on a PhD before they can get in. So uh, making, comfort living, making a comfortable living is, uh, is great, was not the primary motivator, and I'm thinking anybody that made it the primary motivator would be uh, sadly disappointed because it, uh, being a dentist is great, but it can be hard work, it can be frustrating working close to people who don't want to be there, let's face it. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, that was number six. Number five, the fact that we get to give back to our communities in meaningful ways. So, you know, I've, I did um, Dentistry from the Heart events for seven years. I do this outreach to this day uh, out of my motorhome, this, um, where I have portable dental equipment, and I go out and I do free dentistry for people in need. Anything we do in the motorhome, and my staff uh, comes most of the time and helps me, anything we do in there is free, even if somebody happens to have insurance or money in their pocket or on welfare, whatever it is. We don't accept it when we're doing it out of the motorhome because it just makes us feel good to say that we're doing our part and that we're helping people in need. And as a dentist, what better uh, way to give back than to do dentistry, right? So, okay, and I, that w I, I agree with that premise, and um, so... Yeah, it's good, and I think my staff enjoys it when we go out and we do that. They must, or they wouldn't come and help. <laughs> okay, so that was number five. Uh, oh, and also, um, yeah, I guess this goes back to uh, the same thing as a comfortable living, but not every dentist does this. Um, uh, we get to give back in other ways. So, for example, my wife and I uh, sponsor a scholarship for a high school student in Clintonville each year. It's in conjunction with uh, Clintonville Rotary. And it's $4,000 towards their college. And uh, actually, the winner, this year's winner, is going to be on the show next week. So you'll get to meet her. She seems like an awesome young lady. So I'm real happy that she won. Okay. Number four. We're counting down, remember? Number four is we're respected by most people, even the ones who are afraid of coming to us. Because <laughs> I can't tell you how many people I, I hear say to me, you know, it's not you. I don't really hate you. I just hate going to the dentist. It's this whole thing. It just gives me the willies or I'm just, you know, I was hurt in the past or um, there's just something about the numb feeling I don't like. But even though they don't want to come or only come on, a, on a, a, a basis of where they have a toothache or something or even though they're not the people that come every six months for various reasons, um, they still have respect for, for the dentistry and the dental community and for what we do. Um, just the other day, somebody from this very station came to... Uh, was in was in pain, and uh, we were able to get him out of pain. He said he had all this pain, like on his upper right ear, extended all the way to his upper right ear, and um, he was written down in the schedule as an initial exam, X-ray visit was not written down as a uh, as an emergency toothache, or we would have had some other things ready to go. But 
once he was there, it became clear the reason he was there was because of this pain. And so after our x-rays, after our exam, we decided to delve into what was causing that. And it turns out he had this, um, he had a secondary abscess on a tooth that had had a root canal. We couldn't say for sure exactly what was the cause, uh, but it was very, very hard to get numb. It was just very, uh, a hot tooth. We call them hot teeth. And we thought that there would be a crack in the tooth. Sometimes if the, bo if the tooth gets a little hairline fracture, the body reacts to it, gives you all this pain. And even if it's a root canal tooth, like this one was, so we made the decision to extract it and, um, and pack bone up in there in anticipation that we're going to go back in about four months and place a dental implant. But anyway, the minute I took that tooth out, he said, oh my goodness, all the pressure from up by my ear is gone. You know, almost like it was all related to there was a cyst on the end. So maybe that cyst was pushing on a nerve up in there. But regardless of what it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it kind of leads me to uh, number three, which is we get to relieve people's pain and suffering. Okay? I mean, I can't tell you how powerful that is for me. In fact, the other day, somebody asked me what was my favorite part about being a dentist, and I told them, I don't want to give away number two yet, but number three, pain, relieving people's pain and suffering was one of them one of them. And, you know, people come in in pain if you've never met them before, and they could seem like, like almost like a terrible person. They're mean, they're gruff, they're curt, whatever it is. And I know that as soon as I get them numb and get them out of pain, this beautiful, wonderful person is going to come through. They're really a nice person. They're really happy. They're just in this terrible pain. And so, you know how you've probably heard in your life, uh, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, don't beep the horn, don't get involved in uh, road rage or anything. Just think to yourself, you know what, maybe they're dealing with something really crappy. Maybe they just heard that their, their uh, father is in a car accident and is in the hospital. You know, maybe they just were told they, their spouse wants a divorce. Um, whatever it is. Or maybe they have a terrible, terrible toothache and they're trying to get to me. <laughs> you know? So anyway, um, I would say don't beep your horn, don't chase them, just let them go and figure they've got a good reason. But I'll tell you, getting rid of somebody's pain, it's just such a great feeling. It's probably the reason that I go in on a regular basis uh, when people need me after hours. I was there on, uh, let's see, I was there on Friday night after hours. I was there, uh, let's see, I was there, oh, I'm go I was there this morning before the show. So I got to the office at about 10 to 6. And I got prepared for a patient who's coming when I get off the air, 8.45. So... Um, you know why? Because I like taking care of people. I like uh, uh, working with folks who need my services. Okay? So it looks like it's time for me to go to a break. And when we come back, you're going to find out the top two, meaning numbers two and one, reasons why I think it's great to be a dentist. We'll be right back. You can't take me as I am. And I just a little bit. Too much for me. Yeah. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Greigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> We're counting down the top ten reasons why I think it's great to be a dentist. We've covered the first eight. And, uh, hey, I just want to mention, uh, maybe you remember last week's show, we had Jared Mahone on the show with us, live from Alaska. 
And then on Friday, which would be, what, three days? Two days ago, uh, we went and saw him perform at Natalie's Coal-Fired Pizza. Like we mentioned, it was an awesome show. If Jared, if you're listening, great job, great job. And uh, we wish him well. I hope that he becomes a national celebrity sometime. But if it happens, it's going to be on his terms because he will not sign one of those contracts that takes away his art- artistic uh, integrity. So anyway, but he's making a great living doing what he's doing. And um, I wish him all the best. We'll probably have him on the show again at some point. Okay, so number two of the, my top ten is we get to change people's lives with, smake- with smile makeovers. <coughs> I just made a new word, didn't I? Smakeovers. <laughs> I don't think that's going to make it into the dictionary anytime soon. But anyway, I can't tell you how rewarding it is to uh, do veneers for somebody or every tooth if that's what they needed. And, or even just a couple teeth that had turned black, a couple fillings, maybe four or five fillings in the upper front teeth where they had the black spots. And watch that person's eyes when we give them the mirror. I'm telling you, more often than not, they tear up. Sometimes it's full-fledged, can I have a tissue? Because they're, you know, tears coming out of both eyes. And it's just very, very rewarding. I can't think of many uh, perf- occupations where you truly change life. Well, you might change lives, but you may not know it. And you may not get to meet the person. So we actually get to meet the person, make the change, and see the reaction to it. My mom used to say she liked to do nice things for her kids while she was alive to see the smile on our face. She didn't want to just like try to leave us money when she was gone. She wanted to like give us something nice and, wa- and see the smile. So I, I, I think that's a really cool plan. And, um, and I think she's right. I really do. Uh, So, you know, I'm going to try to do the same thing for my kids if I can. And so, you know, that reminds me, there's a quote here, and we'll get to my top uh, reason for being a dentist in a minute. But it it was scrolling. For those of you watching, you've probably seen it, and I have to find it again to read it. Here it is. It says, My father didn't tell me how to live. He lived and let me watch him do it. And that was from Clarence Buddington Kelland. I've not heard of that gentleman, but that is a very powerful um, quote. And it's the way I, I believe I've raised my kids. And um, I think that my dad did the same thing. You know, so we were talking off the air with my producer about if you want a child to do something, uh, exhibit a certain behavior, you have to model that behavior. So if you uh, brush your teeth, your child will brush theirs. If they watch you brush, they're going to brush theirs. They watch dad shave and they pretend to shave. That's how they learn to shave, right? So... Anyway, I thought that was powerful, and being Father's Day, I wanted to make sure I got that in for those of you that aren't watching, aren't able to watch at the moment, just listening. And then the final one, the top reason, the top reason, and you may, may, not, uh, you may be surprised by this, but the top reason that I love being a dentist is I get to develop relationships with my patients, their kids, and their grandkids. See, these people, you people become my friends. I love seeing you every six months, and we catch up on what's going on in our lives. And uh, the gentleman that I went in to see on Friday uh, reminded me and my wife that um, his kids grew up with my kids, you know? And it's like, oh, I remember that. And his kids were in band, I immediately remembered, and they went to the same school, and, and, um, and now his kids have moved on, and, you know, and when they get married and they have kids, oftentimes they bring their children to us. And so I feel very, very fortunate that I get to meet new people all of the time, and I learn so much from the people that I do meet. I... Uh, you'd be amazed at how many hidden talents are out there that people have that you have no idea they have until you get to peel back the layers. Wouldn't it be neat if you could go up to, let's say you're in Panera, and you could just go up to any table you wanted, or every table for that matter, and ask the person to tell you about themselves? It would be so interesting, I think. Or, or, or even more fun for me is because I'm up sometimes in the middle of the night, like um, whether it's uh, taking care of a patient in the middle of the night or... I just had to go run an errand that I didn't get done. It has to be done by morning. It could be uh, dropping off a payment at the bank, or it could be uh, picking up something that they need to take to the office. And I see another car out there, and I'm thinking, I wonder why they're out at 3 in the morning, or 4 in the morning, or 5 in the morning. And I'd just like to stop them and say, tell me, what, why are you out at 3 in the morning? But anyway, as a, as a dentist, and, and I get to see people every six months, I, um, I get to know you. And the nice thing about being a dentist, in my opinion, as opposed to a physician, is when you go to your physician, all you want to do is talk about your ache or your pain, right? Most people don't ask their physician how they're feeling today. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. (laughs) And yet, uh, when people come to the dentist, because you're coming for maintenance, you're coming for an exam and cleaning, not necessarily a root canal or a bridge or an extraction, we get to talk. We get to talk and uh, just learn about life and what makes the world go round and what makes you tick and so on and so forth. So... That, honestly, is my favorite part about being a dentist, is the relationships. 
and I appreciate the relationships that we have uh, with this radio show, for those of you that tune in every week. And I really, really, more than you realize, appreciate you listening, because I, I, um, I, I wouldn't want to think I'm sitting here talking and nobody's hearing. <laughs> so anyway, I believe that's all the time I have. I'm pretty sure that's it for this show. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. My dad, my father-in-law, my son, my two uh, son-in-laws. And um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. Please visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 